How long can you survive without your heart? Well, according to most doctors, you can survive for three to four minutes, then your brain cells will start dying from the lack of oxygen. So if there is no heartbeat, the heart is not contracting, the blood is not circulating through the body, and there's no oxygen supply. So it's kind of crazy to think that while waiting for a heart transplant, a Michigan man named Stan Larkin managed to live without a heart for 555 days. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. One day when he was just 16 years old, Stan Larkin was playing basketball with his friends near his home when he suddenly collapsed. After he was rushed to the hospital, doctors diagnosed him with arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, which causes irregular heartbeats and puts the patient at a highly increased risk of cardiac arrest. Because of this, doctors installed a defibrillator in Larkin's chest as a temporary fix to regulate his heartbeat. But after several years, Larkin's condition worsened and was put on the heart transplant waiting list. The problem was Larkin had a O positive blood type, the most common type, which meant that he was not going to be among the top of the list, and doctors feared that he would die before he would receive a new heart. That's when cardiac surgeon Jonathan Haft at the University of Michigan Hospital thought maybe Larkin could just live without a heart at all. So in November of 2014, Larkin's heart was actually removed from his chest and he was hooked up to a 418 pound machine called Big Blue, which is meant to be his artificial heart. Although this did work, but Larkin couldn't really do anything except stay in bed because, well, he was connected to a 400 pound machine. Luckily, a month later on Christmas, Larkin received a recently approved technology, a portable version of Big Blue that was around 13 pounds and fit into a backpack. Larkin told told CNN that I was shocked when the doctors started telling me that I could live without a heart in my body and that a machine was going to be my heart. Just to think about it, a machine, it feels like a real heart. With the backpack, Larkin was able to have a somewhat normal life. He played some light basketball and was able to spend time with his family. He said, it's just like a real heart. It's just in a bag with tubes coming out of you. But other than that, it feels like a real heart. It felt just like a backpack with books in it, like if you were going to school. There were a lot of restrictions though Larkin had to take very quick showers because of the whole electricity issue and said he was still not able to pick up his kids from school but the good news is that after 555 days of this ordeal Larkin finally received a heart transplant in May of this year. At a press conference, he said, I'll probably run a few pickup games, but not right away. I haven't taken a shot yet without the backpack hooked up. I just want to put the heart to use. The story made me think of a couple of things. One is that you really have to have a tough, determined, optimistic mindset to go through what Larkin went through. I mean, you are basically living without a heart and you know it. Basically, your heart is inside a backpack that you're carrying around every day with tubes sticking into your body. That's that's a psychological burden. I mean, I can't even begin to imagine. So it's great to see someone who has such a strong will and such an uplifting attitude about the tribulations that he had to go through, and I just found it really inspirational. The other thing this story brought to my mind was that uh, it's great that Larkin received a organ donation, and thinking about organ donations, a major news broke. I don't know if you guys saw this. It's in all the major medias, but China is still engaging in the widespread and systematic harvesting of organs from prisoners and especially prisoners of conscience. If you don't know what this is all about, basically there are prisoners in China called prisoners of conscience who could be uh, locked up because of their beliefs, uh, faith, uh, religious beliefs, uh, political beliefs. These people are uh, Christians, Tibetans, Falun Gong practitioners. Essentially, they're locked up, not because they committed a crime, but because they may have views that conflict with the communist regime or openly practice a religion that is banned in China. For you guys who don't know, although there are churches in China, they are all run by the state. And it's okay to go to church, but if you have a non-sanctioned Bible or hold a Bible study in your house, then you're gonna get arrested and sent to prison or a labor camp. And when you go into these prisons where labor camps your blood is tested to see what type you are and when a match comes up when an order comes from overseas then you're gonna be executed and your organs extracted this new report estimates that 60,000 to a hundred thousand organs are transplanted each year in Chinese hospitals and keep in mind China does not have a, a set up organ donation process not like here where you can sign the back of your driver's license now that doesn't happen in China but there are cases in China where sometimes before a patient dies he or she can 
voluntarily give up uh, his or her organs where the doctors can request it and the patient could say yes. So according to the Chinese government numbers, there are only about 10,000 cases of organ donation in China. So there really should only be about 10,000 um, organ transplant surgeries happening in China, but this new report found there's 60 to 100,000. So that could be, you know, 60 to 100,000 innocent people who are being killed each year just because they want to practice their faith freely or have their own political views. And if you're wondering why China's organ harvesting is focused on uh, prisoners of conscience, that's because people who are in prison, not because they kill someone or because of drug habits or anything, they usually have pretty healthy bodies and of course, pretty healthy organs that's why when they sell an organ they want to focus on these people and keep in mind this is not some crazy illegal organization like the mob running this this whole organ harvesting thing It's the government of China running it so just as I was wrapping up the story about Stan Larkin this news broke about the organ harvesting in China so I really wanted to mention it here and uh, share that with you guys so uh, if you want to know more about this topic I have put all the relevant information in the in the uh, description box for you guys to read more about so please take a look thank you guys so much for watching this video. See you later.